Welcome to the Science Asylum. I am Nick Lucid. The question we're answering in this episode, how do microwaves actually cook? Normally you just throw your food in, push some buttons, wait a few minutes and voila, your food is magically cooked. But what happens behind the curtain? There really isn't much on the inside. It's mostly empty space. You've got a big cooking space over here, and almost all the circuitry is crammed in over here, which is why the weight of the oven is never centered. We'll start this basic tour from the moment you press start. Okay, so your wall socket provides about 120 volts, give or take. The power cord carries that voltage into the oven, where it encounters something called a transformer. No, 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 a circuit transformer. That's better. This transformer is one of the simple electronic devices. It has no moving parts or digital parts of any kind, and it doesn't require any weird advanced physics to understand. It's made of a very heavy iron block called a core, with three wire coils wrapped around it. This thing is so heavy, it represents almost the entire weight of the oven. Only one of those coils connects to the power cord, which remember is 120 volts. What comes next is true genius. They're called transformers because they transform voltage. Most transformers lower it, others raise it. The one in the microwave oven can do both. Remember, it has three coils total, one for incoming power and two for outgoing power. This one takes the voltage down about 36 times to about three volts. The other one one takes it up about 16 times to about 2,000 volts. Very dangerous. In fact, when you hook it up all by itself, it does this. That 2,000 volt line goes immediately into a big honking capacitor. This capacitor is the most dangerous part of the microwave. The problem with the capacitor is that it stores electrical energy, sometimes for years or even decades. Ever been told not to open a microwave? That's why. Anyway, how the capacitor and its peripherals work would require an entire video to explain. So I'll spare you the agony and just say that it turns the AC that you'd normally get into DC. The whole process inadvertently ends up doubling the voltage. Basically, it's like having a four 4,000 volt battery that never dies. Now that we have a 4,000 volt line and a 3 volt line, we can move forward. Both of these are carried to the same device, the magnetron. No, no, magnetron, not megatron. There, that's better. Both the voltage lines connect to the bottom of the magnetron, which is kind of a mini particle accelerator. I like to call it an electron gun because that's what it does. It fires electrons. The three volts heats up a piece of metal, which makes the electrons loose. Then the 4,000 volts pulls them off the metal and launches them fast, fast into the top part of the magnetron, where a couple of magnets generate a magnetic field that looks like this. The moment these electrons get launched into it, they spin around in circles. Those circles are what make the microwave oven possible because light is created. No, no, not visible light. They'd have to be going a lot faster for that. These electrons make microwaves. Gah! Not the oven, the wave. That's better. The whole thing is set up so the microwaves have a frequency of 2.45 gigahertz, the frequency best absorbed by water molecules. The only way this is possible is if those electrons are going around that circle two and a half half billion times a second. I meant it when I said fast, fast. See, every substance has a special frequency of light that it most dislikes letting through. Glass, for example, stops a type of ultraviolet called UVB dead in its tracks. It turns that light into heat, which is why your car windows are so warm after they've been sitting in the sun all day. Water does the same thing, but with microwaves. It's the water in your food that cooks your food. The magnetron shines the microwaves into the cooking space. In order to get the most out of this though, you need the waves to be big. So the oven designers made the cooking space just the right size. So when the waves bounce off the other side, they line up with themselves. Then the two waves combine to make one huge wave. Unfortunately, now the peaks are always in the same place. Quick fix! They put in a turntable to move your food around so you don't have cold spots in there. Okay, so in summary, and as simple as humanly possible, the electricity comes in from the wall, goes into the transformer for a boost, goes into the magnetron to make microwaves, shines into the cooking space, and is absorbed by the water in your food, heating it from the inside. All of which happens in a fraction of a second. You'll probably never look at a microwave oven the same again. So what's the craziest thing you've ever tried to put in a microwave oven? Let us know in the comments. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy.